Hi and welcome to the in-depth guide for text delay. If you haven't already, check out the uh, quick start guide if you'd like to just uh, have a brief rundown of all the different features. But otherwise, let's start with an example to show off the usefulness of text delay. So I've got some text here and I'm going to just transition it in quickly. So start it off screen and uh, we can see we've got text delay already. So that's the default. And then what I want it to do is maybe scale up a lot. And uh, that looks good. So I'm going to apply elastic out to these. A great thing about text delay is that we don't have to wait for one transformation to finish before we can start another one. So we can just stack transformations on top of each other and they will still compute correctly. Although might not give the reader enough time to see the text at the start, but who cares really? It doesn't matter what the text says, it just matters how it looks. I kid, okay, so uh, that looks good. Let's turn on the motion blur. And um, then to transition it out, I want to change the uh, auto modifier. I want it to go from right to left. So as soon as we've finished this, uh, transformation. Let's go to the auto modifier and set that to reverse and then we can get the position to go out. And uh, this is a bit of a problem. If we move the position out like that, we can see we're getting it cut off. And the reason for that is that the text is here and uh, After Effects doesn't draw that text it only draws the bit that's on the screen so that's why the rest of it's getting cut off so I know this is annoying but this is a necessary evil what we have to do is make the comp bigger and then when you render I would chuck this comp inside just a 1280 by 720 and then you would have your original composition so sorry about that but that's a technical limitation that can't be overcome now I think we're getting a bit of a glitch here and I I have a feeling that's just because of the um, the position easing expression. Let's turn that on. Yeah, we can see we're getting some elastic going on there, even between two keyframes that don't change. So let's delete these keyframes and add in anchor point instead. And there we have it, looking good. Okay, so here's an interesting example. I've got some Ipsum text, and I'm using eye expressions to just randomly wiggle it and uh, if we turn on the text delay we can see we're getting some wavy patterns here which looks pretty cool something like uh, the text is floating or it's being blown in the wind and we can drastically change the look of that depending on uh, say increasing the tracking to a lot or increase the leading I think this is called cool. I'm not sure uh, let's set that to something really high yeah, so that'll spread the text out a lot. And uh, also changing the delay by a lot can make it really different. So now we're delaying by a lot and the text looks like it's, um, I don't know, a large worm or something. If we were to make the text very small, we could create like uh, a sea of strange looking, kind of like alphabet soup, like you used to eat, except um, this one's not edible unfortunately. Not that you'd want to eat circular standard, it's not healthy for you. So that looks like a, a swarm of ants or something. I don't know, you could have probably use this for particle effects if you wanted to. If you if you couldn't afford trap code particular, you can just buy this plugin. Now let's quickly talk about the separation mode. So if we enable the separation guide, you can see the different colors here. So this looks good. All the characters are sort of separated and uh, we have word which separates them by word and then as I mentioned the ghetto way to just uh, separate by line is to increase the separation threshold. Um, if you were to go separation character you maybe could um, nearly separate by line but actually we can't on this particular example because the separation threshold max of 200 isn't enough so uh, separation mode by word also has a few optimizations so I recommend always if you want to separate by line 
always select separation mode word and then get the separation you want uh, because it's going to be more efficient but if you want character obviously you'll go with character and uh, set it to whatever you like if we were to say use an italicized font we or if we had uh, less tracking here we can run into problems where we're getting sort of glitches here and that's because it's drawing a little box around the letter and actually selecting a bit of the other letter so what we could do is instead of having the tracking here we can set that one back to zero and then we can do the tracking in the tracking tab so we've got the tracking modes middle left or right which are the same as the paragraph justification modes and then we can make the tracking as small as we want here and then we won't have any problems with the separation so I'll just set this to a value that would let us be correct and then we're not getting any artifacts now let's do another fun example so what we can do is grab the mask tool and draw the circle copy the path paste that into position and that's sort of the effect that was in the preview video although that looks a little boring because we don't have any E's so let's go to the, um, the graph here and instead of the value graph we want to look at the speed graph and we can see it's pretty boring it's just constantly linear so I'm going to drag this one to zero stretch that out a lot and then drag this one to zero stretch that out the same lot although that looks probably a bit too extreme let's just go two bars each That looks cool, although I think we could benefit from some more delay and some more curves. Two and a half. And then we want to turn on motion blur. And and let's just move it more into the center. And there you have a fun loopable animation. We like to have fun here. Another technical limitation that we have is if we were to scale our text from large to very small or non-existent, we can see we're getting some problems here. The text gets more and more pixelated and that's because this is the text here. Text delay is literally blowing that back up to its original size. And as a consequence, we get more and more pixelation as we uh, zoom in. So. Unfortunately, that there's no way around that. We really can't zoom into zero unless the delay was such that it was not noticeable. Uh, I would recommend just time remapping or re time reversing these uh, keyframes and then you can have a scale up, but unfortunately you can't have a scale down. Another limitation is that text delay does not take into account Z position unfortunately the text can be 3d and we can see the text is still working but if we were to move it in Z space we'd get some funky stuff going on and also rotation will not work you can rotate but it won't um, it won't take into account rotation rotating animation rather so if we were to start at zero and then rotate it we'd also get some funky things going on Enough about limitations, let's create something cool. So I've got some text here and I want to transition it in a fun way. So we'll go say 30 frame animation and let's do expo in and out. And then what I want is for the text to change. So let's go to text, source text and in the middle here when it's moving at its quickest, let's be sneaky and change the text to Lauren Ipsum and uh, we'll hide that in the motion blur when we have text delay so I want to start reverse because I want it to go from right to left and we can see it's transitioning but uh, we need to have less delay so that most of the characters are transitioning now we may not get away with that even with motion blur, I think that will still be too noticeable that the text changes like that. So 
what we'll do is make this animation longer. That way, when we get to a period where all the text is moving, we can sneak in a transition. There we go, pretty seamless. So that's it for text delay. Let me know if you have any future feature requests and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.